Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are in Beverwijk in Clubhouse Paddle and Ping Pong. And we're going to do how to counter attack the smash. And we're going to start right now. Okay. Ah, lekker boelie! And we have sales on just paddle.com. I like it. You like it? Good match. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to tell you how you can counter-attack the smash. So if your opponent is playing a smash, there are some easy ways in how to position yourself in order to counter-attack the smash quite easy. Most players are not aware that they have to change their position when your opponent is playing the smash. Somebody has to go forwards, somebody has to go backwards, and how that position will be, I will tell you in this video. I will also tell you that uh, you don't need to stress that it's quite easy. There are so many Pavel players that don't have a super smash, but they are smashing a lot. And we are not really training how to counter attack the smash. You know that there are a lot of smashers and you know it as well that they just don't have an amazing smash. So if you know how to counter attack those smashers, you are going to win a lot of points and you're gonna break their ego. So if you want to win a lot of points, you should watch this video. This video is especially for the people that are not really doing so much when their opponents play a smash uh, that is not a scoring smash. And I think one of the best methods ever is maybe a bad lob, go to the net, and win the point. So today we're going to uh, explain to you how you position yourself when your opponent is playing a smash, where should you go, how should you communicate uh, in this moment. We're going to divide it in three sectors because the first one is what are you gonna do before your opponent is playing the smash, what are you gonna do during the, uh, the smash of your opponent and what, are you do and what are you doing after the smash of your opponent. So we start with reading the smash. So we need to have a lot of information so we can move early. Um, because if we are not really reading the smash, it's going to be a guess. And if you are guessing or gambling on the smash, uh, it's not gonna be relaxed. And I think this is the moment where your opponent's playing the smash and you don't know what's going to happen. You're gonna react, you're gonna make mistakes. And there's a lot of information out there that you can see and that you can use in order to just know what's going on. And I can promise you that you can walk on the court and counter attack the smash if you know what you are doing. So first, reading the smash. How can you read your smash of the opponent? In the warm up, I would highly recommend to feed some high balls to your opponent and check the difference between the shape of their technique when they're playing a bandeja, a vibora and a smash. So if you can see that they're going to smash, they're probably here or there or something else. And if they're playing a bandeja vibora, their record is mostly higher than the ball. So this is the first thing that you have to recognize. They're not gonna play the smash if they're gonna be here for a long time or there or behind the head. Be aware that some people are really good in hiding their smash, like camouflage. So they can do like a vibora and last second they can smash. So this is uh, more complicated, but for most club player levels, you can see that they're going to smash. Then it's quite important that you know the depth of your lob. So if you lob quite short, you probably know that they're going to smash. If you lob quite deep, they might not smash. So if you're gonna run forwards uh, after a deep lob and they play a soft shot or a bandeja, you might be in a very wrong position because the position that I'm going to teach you today when defending the, the smash is wrong for a bandeja defense or a vibra defense. So this is especially a different position for defending the smash. You also need to know where your opponents are positioned because if your opponent is positioned very close to the net, um, they might not be able to smash after your lob because they need to run backwards too much. Uh, also, if your opponent is already close to the net, um, they might be, you, you don't have so much time to respond. So maybe blocking that smash is better because they are already close to the net. Maybe your lob is short. You don't have time to run forwards and to catch it. So then it would be better to, to block it, for instance. Uh, if your opponent is very far from the net, 
Um, I would not recommend to play a lot, but to play it down if that is possible. But if they're far from the net, they have a lot of time to respond on a smash. So that smash is probably going to be better because if somebody has to walk forwards and smash, it's going to be way more powerful than, than that. So I think these, there are a lot of more elements, uh, but these three things are crucial. Then for extra, extra bonus, extra bonus is very, very bonus, um, because it, it's already bonus. This is what we call situation anticipation. We spoke about this in the YouTube channel more, but if, um, if somebody likes to smash a lot, and you know this because uh, they are not gonna win every point, but if your opponent is smashing every single shot out there, you know that you just have to go forwards more often. And if you know that your opponent doesn't have a smash, you should not go forward so much. So this is also a situation anticipation that you can see in the rally when they are smashing the ball. Some people only smash when they're winning. Some people smash when they're upset. Some people they are uh, smashing because they want to, they missed a few balls and they want to feel better. So then you know what is coming. So this is also extra. Step number two is to block or not to block. I was struggling to find if this is step two or three, but if your lop is short, you need to instantly decide to block it because there is no way that it's possible to have a good counter attack. So what I would highly recommend is if you lop short or if you know your opponent can smash and or you play in Madrid and the ball is so fast, the, the bounce is so high, block. So then you don't need all this positioning that I'm going to tell you um, during the video. Then it's just blocking the ball because if you are going to run forwards, you're never going to get uh, the ball. So block or not to block is step number two. Short, uh, short lobs, block. Super smashers, block. If you're not able to play outside the court, block. So if your opponent can play the ball outside the court very well, uh, but you're not allowed to go outside the court, block. So these are all things that you have to do. You don't even have to run, block. Oppa! Step number three is position yourself in the correct way. And the correct way is that the player uh, cross courts is stepping two steps over the service line and the player at the back stays at the, at the player at the back stays at the back. Nice tip, Sven. Uh, the player on the right side, so this is uh, the parallel, will stay at the back. And you do this because if your opponent plays a fake smash, as you see in this video, uh, he's able to get the fake smash. Also, the players on the left side are more likely to go outside the court because the player on the right side has to do a flat smash cross court to get the ball outside the court. And it's quite complicated for a player on the right that is right-handed to play cross court out of the court. It's not so easy. It's easy to play with kick. And kick only works from left to left. This is why also left-handed players have an advantage because uh, they have more options. So the player cross courts. So now Bart is playing a smash from the left side. My position is two steps in front of the white line. Nick's position is at the back. So if Bart is going to play a very good smash, I'm going to cross over and to get it for Nick. If Bart is going to play outside the court, I'm going to walk outside the court to get the ball. If Bart is going to play the fake smash, Nick is going to get to the middle and defend that shot. If Bart is going to play super fast straight, it might be better that Nick is going to take uh, the block or I can cross over and take it for Nick. So this is what you have to decide very, very quickly to say you or me. So there has to be one captain. It's like, if we smash, I'm going to tell you, me, uh, if I'm going to block, yes or not. In this situation, Bart is playing from the right side and he's going to smash. Bart is also able to play the kick outside straight. So then it could also be an option that my position is going two steps in front and Nick's position is two steps uh, maybe behind the line to, to block the shot but it's more likely um, that the player on the right is covering for the player on the left. So it's always this cross court. This is not like you have to do it this way, 
but I would highly recommend to, uh, to do this because what will happen is if somebody is smashing to me, I need to dodge the ball and I need to run forwards. So if the smasher is always going to play very fast, straight to the body, I need to dodge the ball or I need to jump. And at the same time, I need to run forwards. And that's quite complicated. So then it's better or easier for the player cross to cross over. Uh, so this is why the positioning is like this. Of course, you don't have to listen to me. You can have your own positioning. But what is important is that at least one player is back and one player is stepping forwards. So they have time to respond. So for instance, um, it's where I was playing with is a very quick player. So sometimes he was going forwards because he's quicker than me. So this is what you have to change. But if this is like a basic strategy that you can use, you can always adjust depending on the skills of your opponents and the skills of, of you two. Um, but in this way that you can play it like I explained now, you can do it walking. You don't have to run. And this is also the best way to play Paolo is that you walk on the court. Because if you, are, if you have time, you can win the points uh, without overthinking or rushing. So you will make way better decisions. Step number four, go out or go in. So if the smasher is going to play straight, it might be my ball and I'm going in. If the smasher is going to play out and I'm playing on the left, I go out. So the cross courts will go out. So if Bart is smashing from the right to the right, my partner Nick is going out. If Bart is playing from the left side, left side cross courts, then I am going out. If he plays straight, we cross over and we're gonna help each other. Step number five, say it! say it so this is quite important because uh, what a lot of players uh, do is th this is quite a fast situation and they just stop talking to their partner you have to tell us if the player that played the smash is going backwards forwards or is going to stay because if they are still here and you play a drop shot it's not gonna work if they're backwards and you play a safe shot it's not gonna work So you have to tell your partner where your cross courts player is positioned or where both players are positioned. But I recommend to tell it from the player that smashed or the player that is at the back. So you can decide if you do a trick shot. This is not a trick shot video, but um, this is more about how to position yourself correctly to easily counter attack the smasher. He's going back, he's going back. Yes, super. I'm off. Thank you all for watching. I hope you like this video. If you want to request a video, then let me know below what video I should do next. And uh, thank you all for watching. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.